Hi guys! In my TiVo Tornado 3D printer review, I mentioned that the firmware of the TiVo Tornado did not have the EEPROM enabled, which means you could not save changes made in the settings menu. The good news is that TiVo is listening and fixing the issues, and the recent patches already have the EEPROM enabled. All the guys that have the firmware 1.1 already have the EEPROM enabled. The guys that have the same firmware version as I do need to upgrade the firmware. Even if you have the EEPROM enabled version, you might want to change some parameters in the firmware or update with the modified version. Therefore, I decided to explain how to upgrade the firmware of the TiVo Tornado. So, the first thing you have to do is to download the Arduino software. This will allow you to open the firmware file, change it, and upload it to the board. Google for Arduino download, enter the official Arduino website, and download the latest version. You can choose between the zipped version or the installer. Either one will work. Next, log in to Facebook and enter the TiVo Tornado official form. Go to the file section and download the firmware. This one is the official firmware that TiVo is using in the new batches. There are a few other ones with custom modifications, but in my case, I will install the official one. Once you have Arduino and the firmware unzipped and ready, open the Arduino software and load the firmware file named tornado.ino. Once loaded, you must see all these tabs on top. Now, select the configuration.h tab, and here are the most important settings. One thing you can do, for example, is to change the message that is displayed on the screen when the printer is in idle. For example, you can change it with your name instead. If you go further down, you can see the steps values. If you already checked your extruder calibration, you can edit here or later on the display since this one has the EEPROM enabled. Another important and sometimes forgotten setting is the default max feed rate for the extruder. In here, you can see that the max feed rate for the X, Y and Z. The extruder is this last one and, as you can see, the default value is 55 which means you cannot set speeds higher than 55 in your retraction speed. This default value is ok, but if by any chance you decide to work with faster extruder speeds, you need to increase this value. Next, you have accelerations and jerk settings. These can also be added here or later on screen if you want. More important settings you can find below here, you can edit the X, Y and Z max positions. If you already know how much your axis can move before hitting the mechanical limit, you can edit these values here. This way, your machine will never go over these limits and will never hit the mechanical limit, as long as the home sequence is done first. One last setting you can edit is here almost at the end. It's the LCD language. Here you can define what language you want to have in the display menus. You have plenty of options. In my case, if I want to select Portuguese, I go here to the list and I see that for Portuguese I must use the PT option instead of the EN for English. So I just replace the EN with PT. Now it's time to configure Arduino so that we can proceed with the upload of the firmware. At the top, go to Tools, Board and select Arduino Mega 2560. And the same for the processor. Also confirm that the AVR ISP MK2 programmer is selected. Next is the port. For this, you must connect to the printer. Use your uh, USB cable 
and with the printer turned off, connect the printer to the PC. The display should turn on right now. Your operating system will start to detect new hardware and will try to install the drivers. You will need the FTDI drivers for this. You can find them in the Arduino folder. When prompt, just point to that folder so that Windows can install them. Go to Device Manager and locate the new devices. You should see two of them. In my Windows 10 PC, the USB serial converter device was installed with the Arduino drivers and the USB serial port was installed automatically by Windows itself. If with this you still are unable to configure the new devices, enter the FTDI website, download the drivers from there and install them. Don't close the device manager just yet. Go to the COM port and check which is the port number that has been given to the printer. Go back to Arduino and in Tools, Port, select the same port number. And you're almost there! Just one more thing you need to do before flashing the firmware. Go to Sketch, Include Library and look for the U8G library. Most probably it will not be included. So go up to Manage, Libraries and at the top type in the name of the library you are looking for which is U8G lib. Search for the library and select Install. When finished, confirm that the library is now included in the list. And we are now ready to flash the firmware. At the left icon, click on Verify. Arduino will now verify if the firmware is OK and can be compiled correctly. This might take a while, so don't worry. When done, you can see the results at the bottom. No red words, so we are good to go. Click on Upload and wait. At this time, don't disconnect the cable, don't turn off the PC or anything else. Let it flash the firmware before doing something else. This process will also take a few minutes. Once the flashing process is complete, the controller will reboot itself. You can now remove the USB cable from the PC and from the controller and turn on the printer. Confirm the changes and that's it! Thanks for watching guys, any questions let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!